The Biblical Truth of Our Hymns. God rest ye merry gentlemen. Another carol we got from the 18th century English. And we're going to find error again. It's a shame. But in these hymnals, we're finding great error. God rest ye merry gentlemen. And the blah, 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 it, you know, it's the old English writing and it represents something else. And one, two, three, four, five words into the first part of this and the title of this carol. That's not important to what we'll look at afterwards. Uh, so God rest ye merry gentlemen. Let nothing... Let nothing, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was, okay, that's true. The Lord's Supper is remember what the finished work of Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When we partake of the Lord's Supper and what we're often to do in our Christian life, when we study the Bible and read the Bible, is to remind us of Jesus Christ, our Savior. No problem with that. It gives Christ and it gives our who he is, our Savior. Was born on Christmas Day. Well, it's wrong. It's scriptural wrong to be born on Christmas Day. The exact date in the scriptures is never given. And it's definitely for sure not December 25th. It's not Christmas. Now, if you were to take the full word of Christ's Mass, because people always, let's put Christ back in Christmas, it was never there. C-H-R-I-S-T space M-A-S-S. -S. Now, where does that come from? That, come, that does not come from a Bible-believing, studying Christian of the, of the Scriptures. That comes from a worldwide religion of, of hatred to the Word of God, you know, don't read your Bible, do traditions, follow the, these men, follow this hierarchy set forth in the religion, but don't dare read the Bible. I don't have anything to do with Christ's mass. Now, I don't know how far it goes back to my childhood, but there was a mass in my family, in my church going of the Catholic Church. I put an end to that. On April 21st, 1987, I received Christ as my Savior. What we just read in this stanza. And I put away the Christmas Mass. I put away the Christ Mass. I don't eat and drink Jesus Christ for salvation. So already here, born Christ, Christmas Day. Wrong. Scripturally wrong. To save us from all, from Satan's power. When we have gone astray. Saves us. It's true. That's true. He's a Christ our Savior. Satan's power is death and hell. And Christ died to give us victory over death and hell. We'll look at that a little bit later. I'm going astray. Why not just say sin? Why do we not shacking up? Why not we just say fornication? An affair? Why can't we just say adultery? He has a problem with the environment he was growing up with. How about this, our sin nature? Why can't you use sin? Power when we when we sin. Because stray. Rhymes with day, dismay, and sin does not rhyme. And for the sake of poetry and rhyming, and we've seen this before, poetry, oh, let's make it rhyme, let's make it sound good, let's give it to a, to a rhythm of rhyming, and sometimes the rhyming does injustice to the truth of the Bible.
Now, the Bible is infallible. The Bible is correct. The Bible is true. The Bible is 100%. Hymnals are not. And when you're coming along, I got the word dismay, Christmas day, astray. Uh, sin don't fit in there. But then again, we've got born Christmas day. That was already wrong. So we're setting forth in this carol ideas of the Bible being wrong and then just find words that rhyme to make it even wronger, if that's a word. All right, so tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. What's Sounds like these new hymns and songs coming up. It's the same word three or four hundred times. Why not love, joy, and peace? Those are the fruits of the Spirit. Tidings, news, gospel, death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, comfort, I um, Love, joy, and peace. Better than comfort. From God, our Heavenly Father. God is our Heavenly Father. He, he is my Father. A blessed angel came. An angel came, and then there were a host of angels. In Luke chapter 2. And on to the certain shepherds. There was a host Luke chapter 2, which I have opened. And verse number 10, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings and great joy, which shall be to you. Let me try it again, excuse me. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings and of great joy, which shall be to all people. I don't see no comfort in there. I see the joy, good tidings. For unto you is born this day, city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And we're going to look at the next verse in a little bit. But, so, <clears throat> we have, for God our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds, tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Name, same, Cain. We're back to Ryman. Why can we not put that name above all names whereby there's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved? Because Jesus doesn't rhyme with Cain, same, and name. Again, we got a rhythm problem. A rhythm that we, we have to rhyme. And fear not. Verse, uh, Sansa 3. Fear not. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10, the angel said unto him, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So there is some scripture. And there is some falseness. And... I can find a golden diamond ring in the sewer. But I ain't going to go down swimming to go get it. And when Satan the serpent came to Eve, there was some truth. And yet there was some lies. Fear not, then said the angel, let nothing of you affright let nothing you affright it's a quotation marks it is quoted by quotation marks let nothing you affright it is not found in the King James Bible we're back in Genesis chapter 3 Little, a little adding to the scriptures, aren't we? We're quoting an angel, we're quoting God, we're quoting somebody to quote is not found in the scriptures.
Fear not. Then said the angel, let nothing, uh, nothing you affright. This reading this him doesn't make sense. This day is born a savior. Okay. It's not Christmas day, but there was a day the savior was born. Of a pure virgin bright. Now we don't need the word pure. It's an unnecessary adjective to promote Mary. And to throw in there that, that Mary was sinless without sin. To make her a goddess. You know, there is a teaching by the churches that she has never sinned and never will ever sin. She was a sinner. And when you find her bringing and offering the baby to be circumcised the eighth day, and she has turtle doves, and you find that in the scriptures, and when eight days were accomplished, Luke chapter 2, for the circumcising the child, his name was called Jesus. That's not found in this hymn or carol, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord. As it's written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord. And to offer sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. That's a sin offering. Mary was not pure. She was a virgin. And look at Virgin, capital V. Now, shall we open up our King James Bible and look at Isaiah 7, 14? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin, small v, shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, a virgin, small v, shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is inter being interpreted, God with us. And Luke 1, 27, to the virgin, small v, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph in the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Small v. So what is the capital V in virgin rather than the small v in the scriptures for virgin? Here's a capital V in this carol, this hymnal, that the hymn book is not inspired by God. And we've seen this in another carol before, the capital V for Mary and the virginity. And yet the scriptures has a small v. And what you're doing is you're dignifying, you're godifying Mary as a godless goddess as religions would have her. Now the English reformers' positive teaching about Mary concentrated on her role in the young incarnation is summed up in their acceptance of her as the mother of God, capital M. When you say my mother, when you mention my children's mother, when you mention mothers in general, it is not capitalized. But when we put Mary as the mother of God, we have it in capital M. You are making her God. Because this was seen to be both scriptural and traditional. She's not the mother of God. Yes, Jesus Christ is God and, and God is Jesus Christ, but he's also manifested in the, in the, in the ways of Adam, the flesh. And we get this false teaching that Mary, you know, she gave birth to being the mother of God. That's not true. That is paganism. That is false religionism. That's Romanism, Greek godism, and Babylonianism. That there's a mother of God. And everywhere in the Bible, mother and woman, as Jesus will refer Mary to, it's not capitalized. But this was seen to be both scriptural and traditional. Following the traditions of the early church in 
other reformers like Martin Luther and John Calvin, and English reformers such as Hugh Litmar, Thomas Kramer, and John Jewell accepted the perpetual virginity of Mary. I don't care what you accept. It is a Bible incorrect because the Bible tells us that she had sons and she had daughters. And if you're going to say that Mary was a perpetual virgin, and then you don't know your Bible doctrine, you have not studied the, the Bible, so you need to shut up. And you need to let God speak. And so when we capitalize virgin, because the, the virginity forever of Mary, I feel sorry for Joseph, because if Mary is a perpetual virgin, then Joseph was a perpetual virgin. That's not a marriage. That's what the Bible says. They came together. And there's some even today. Too. Well, you know, marriage is not joining flesh, joining flesh. I've heard it. Well, you don't know your Bible either. Yeah. Husband and wife was Mary and, 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 and Joseph. But that was also, hey, this is such a bound before we have marriage that you're my wife. I am your husband. We're not going to break this off. So when we start throwing capital letters for Mary, we're making her God. They neither affirm nor deny the possible, possibility of Mary having been preserved by grace through the participation of an original sin. In other words, we're not sure, but we think something about Mary never had sin. Why did she bring the turtle doves? The Book of Common Prayer you're not to read, you're not to quote from, from prayers. In the Christmas collection in the preface refers to Mary as a pure virgin. So this pure virgin we read in God rest ye merry gentlemen. It's not from the Bible. It's from the common book of prayer or the book of common prayer. We're not to recite prayers. Jesus, you know, our father, our heaven, blah, 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 blah. That was an example. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, capital W, Counselor, capital C, the Mighty God, capital G, the Everlasting Father, capital F, the P, the Prince, capital P, of, print, of Peace, the capital P. So the Bible, and that's just one scripture, I can, we can run many, 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 many scriptures. Peter calls him the shepherd, capital S. So when we put capital W, capital C, capital G, capital F, capital P's for Jesus Christ, we're making him God. So when we put capital V for virgin, guess who we're making? We're making Mary a God. Now, the conclusion is, again, these hymns are not. They are not scriptural. And... Leviticus 12.8. Leviticus 12.8. That's why it's called the biblical truth or hymns. I guarantee there's some people mad at me because I pointed out the truth. It's wrong. And I forgot what I said. Back where it was real quick. Leviticus 12.8. Leviticus 12a. Don't keep saying that, I'll forget. I don't mean to be knocking these, but if they're not scripturally correct, they don't belong in a Christian church. You can have them in your religious church. You can have them in a church that makes Mary God. Go ahead. God's not pleased with it anyway. So just have hit music that doesn't please God. And Leviticus 12a. And she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles, two turtle doves, or two young pigeons. The one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. Mary was not forever without sin. Scripture was scripture. Hallelujah, praise God. The scriptures are correct and the hymns are wrong. I think you already know where I'm going with this one. All right. Got to give you a little Mary teaching there. So pure virgin bright, 
Again, that came from the Book of Common Prayer. It didn't come from the Bible. To free all those who trust in him from Satan's power and might. Trust in him. Why can't you say, for to free all those who have trust in Jesus. Why can't you put Jesus? You know why? Because in a lot of religions, it's not just Jesus that can save you from your sins. I'm surprised they didn't put a, a pronoun that you could be her also. Because there are churches who elevate Mary. Mary can forgive your sins. I mean, me, nasty Jesus, he's just so terrible. We'll just go through his mother. Because she's nice and wonderful. And, you know, the scripture doesn't talk. I would laugh if Mary was complete opposite what they play Mary is today in the churches. <laughs> Mary, did you know? Gabriel told her. Everything. So why have such nonsense? Mary, did you know? Gabriel told her everything. Power and might. Power and might. Death. But we can't get death because death does not rhyme with might, bright, and fright. So we have another problem here. Three times this hymn, this carol, we've got to have rhymes. And the rhymes make it anti-scriptural. Now let's go scripture. Hebrews 2.14. Now stop it, will you? Stop opening the Bible. Stop ruining our, our favorite hymns, our favorite songs with the Bible. How about get rid of the hymns and keep the Bible? Hebrews 2.14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. The man, the Adam, the fleshy part of Jesus Christ. Took on the same. And through death he might destroy him, Satan, that has the power of death. Oh, this is what we've been trying to say here. Destroy him that has the power of death. That is the devil. So, when we keep on in this him, Satan's power, Satan's power, and there is nothing taken from the quotation of Hebrews 2.14. Kind of interesting. Why not quote the verse? Why not quote the Bible? You've already quoted from the, the, that common book of prayer garbage. Oh, they got somebody mad there. While we go on, shall we go on? Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Comfort. You got a broken record. All right. The shepherds at those tidings rejoiced much in mind and left their flocks a feeding. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Luke 2, 15, 16. Let's go back to Luke. I like the carol for one reason. Why, well, they're good? No, because it's all found in Gospel of Luke. We don't have to go far. Since we've done these carols, Luke chapter 2 has been open. That's the story. That's the biblical of the night that or day that Jesus was born. It doesn't even say night. All right, so 2.15. I don't care you hate me. I don't care you don't like me. I'm just preaching the truth. And it's sorry that many Christians who will not have to do anything with me because I do preach the truth. I can kick your Christmas tree now, Jeremiah 10. I can kick your Santa Claus. They're not scriptural. You have Jesus standing at the outside the door of the church today, knocking that you may come out of the mess. Verse 15, Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from the heaven, gone from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem. 
and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, saying which was told them concerning the child. And they that heard it and wondered at those things which were told by the shepherds. All right. Do you get what I just read to you? That's scripture, King James. All right. I'm going to read you from this garbage. Ready? Listen to this garbage. The shepherds at those tidings rejoiced much in mind and left their flock of feeding. Okay. That's, you, that's what you just read in Luke chapter 2. Okay. And tempest, storm, and wind. Where'd you read about a storm and rain and wind? Where on earth did they get a storm when they left the poor sheep in the stormy wind and tempt us? And... Man, I got one word for you with this hand. Shut up! Oh, I, I, I know wind. Yeah, hot air. I don't know where they got that from. It's not in the Bible. And went to Bethlehem, straightway this blessed babe to find. Okay, yeah, I, I read that to you. I didn't read no storm. I didn't read no storm. Okay. But when but when to Bethlehem they came, where this dear infant lay, they found him in a manger. Where oxen feed on hay. But hay lay. Get it, you know? All right, Luke 2.12. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. That's what they were told. Now, there was nothing about oxen. I know oxen eat hay. Shepherds, yes. If you go over to Bethlehem, you'll find a mother, a father, and a babe. That babe's going to be all wrapped up, and he's going to be in a manger. Go find him. His mother, capital M. That makes her mother of God. That makes her a deity. So already, this carol makes Mary a goddess. This has no place to be in a Bible-believing church where people are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. His mother, capital M, Mary, kneeling unto the Lord, did pray. Okay, Luke 2, 16 and 17. Let's do Bible. And they came with haste, with the Bible, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, saying to which was told them concerning this child. Hey, guys, people, come here. What? This angel appeared unto us. There was a host of angels. And they said unto us, If you go over to Bethlehem, you're going to find a babe that is swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. That is the Jewish Messiah. We went and we found him. Wow. This carol goes so far also to say that they pray. There's no mention in the scripture to Luke chapter 2 of pray, <laughs> prayer, hey, or lay. But they're nice little words that make rhymes lay, hey, pray. They're spending more time with, with this carol for a rhyme than they are with the truth.
Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place. Check out Psalms 150 verses 1 through 6, the entire chapter. Praise God, sing unto God, give God the glory. And with true love and charity each other now embrace this holy tide, this holy tide. Somebody get washed up or something? How about tidings? And then you would get the gospel of Christmas. Again, that's not Bible. There's nothing Bible about Christ's mass. Does bring redeeming grace. Okay, redeeming grace. That's excellent. That's great. We've got some truth and we got some untruth. Shall we go to Genesis 3? I'm going to Genesis 3. I don't know if you dare to. But I'll go to Genesis 3. No problem opening my Bible, but Genesis 3, I'll go there. I'll see what the Bible says. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto woman, Yea, has God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? That's what God said. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the tree, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it. Least ye die. Oh, look at look what mankind has done. They have subtracted from the word of God, surely. They have added to the word of God, touch it. The first sin, you know, they say, uh, the, no, not the impartable sin. The, I can't think what the Catholics call it now. The original sin. The original sin is done by the Catholic Church by adding and subtracting to word of God, which throughout the Bible says you're not to do it. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. That's the only lie that Satan tells. And the woman has added and corrected and changed and subtracted from the word of God. That's the only lie. Verse 4, verse 5. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then shall your eyes be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's the truth. Listen, there may be some truth in God rest ye merry gentlemen. And yet we have seen it change and correct the Bible. We have seen it add lies to the or added their own little essay on what happened on the morning that Christ was born. They've stuck some Catholicism and Anglism. And they had trashed the Bible. And it may sound good. It don't sound good to me. To me, it's rotten garbage. And it may sound good to you. But there are lies. And there are lies. And there is truth. And there is truth. But the lies overpower what the Bible truly says. Now, in the conclusion, what would you draw? And it's sorry that for many Christians out there that I will have to draw the conclusion for you because the biggest sin that Satan uses for people is, I like it. We've always done it like this. We've always sang the same carols. And with the truth that is not found in this carol, which is found in the Bible, I've got to say in the, in the opinion that I have, which you may not have, it's incorrect. 
It exalts Mary, which the Bible does not do. It comes upon us Christmas, Christ's mass, which is nowhere in the Bible. It has redeeming, but it mentions no sin. And you cannot be redeemed by God if you do not acknowledge your sin. There are people out there, oh, I'm just a good person and God would be so pleased to have me in his presence. That's not how it works. I'll tell you another way how they say, God just hates to sin and loves the sinner. That's garbage. You're going into the realm of tales and story making that we don't know what happened the day the night and the next day that Jesus Christ was born. We've got some revelation, but this carol goes even further to say what we don't know. I mean, there was a tempest, storm, and wind. <laughs> well, you guys are full of wind, hot air. If I were to come up with, with a, a, a church hymnal, I'm going to do my own church hymnal. This won't be there. I would exclude it, plain and simple. God rest ye merry gentlemen. That's okay if you're in a religion. It's okay if you're in a Catholic church. It's okay if you're in an Anglican church. But it's not okay for the Bible. 